Dual extrusion is a lot more commonplace than it used to be, and in fact, it's more varied than ever. Some 3D printers have both nozzles in the tool head, but they alternate back and forth when it switches from one color material to the other. Others have two different tool heads where one comes in, does the printing, parks, and then the other comes in, does its printing and parks. Some have one nozzle and two inputs so that they can purge between one and start printing with the other, or some have two nozzles at the same height just mounted on the same print head, like the E3D Chimera. But each of these have their own advantages and disadvantages, and if you don't already have these on your printer, there is going to be some external cost involved in order to upgrade your printer to have dual extrusion capabilities. Unless you fake it. There's a couple different ways you can fake dual extruding on your 3D prints. There's first layer inlay, there's layer swapping, there's top inlay, and then there's just printing separate parts. Using separate parts is exactly what it sounds like. You have a base piece and some other pieces that slot into it. Now this is specific to models that don't have any odd angles. They need to have straight walls so that it can easily slide into the other part. Like these two for example. This is the detail piece and it's been modeled so that it fits precisely in here with a little bit of sanding to get it to fit nice and snug. But once that's trimmed up and with a little sanding and a clear coat, it's almost impossible to tell that these were originally two different prints that were put together to make one nice piece. And in fact, I use the same methodology to take Chaos Cortex Optimus Prime model and convert that down into being individual prints instead of one big print for the head. Because originally, it was designed to use one of the filament splicing methods, like the mosaic palette, to splice multiple filaments into one, print it out as one piece. I didn't have that capability, so I took the model, cut it down, and made a bunch of different pieces that just slotted together. Now the way I did this is a little bit technical, so let me demonstrate how I actually did this on my computer. First, I have the base piece here, which I reverse engineered from the shift knob designed by DingoBoy71 on Thingiverse. The top and bottom sections are essentially the same, with some modification made for my car, which has an M8 threading for the shift knob instead of the M12 that the original was made for. Once I had the base remodeled, I started by creating a reference plane above the surface and sketching out the shape I wanted using the various sketch tools. Then I extruded it into the body of the knob, the depth I wanted, and kept it as a new body instead of joining or cutting it like you might initially think. Then I could use the Modify Combine tool to find the intersection between the design and knob, keep that, and take this new body, and then subtract that from the knob. This will give a perfect puzzle piece for the knob, but 3D printers just aren't that precise for zero clearance tolerancing. So instead what we can do is hide all the parts except the inlay, and use the push-pull tool to offset all the side faces inward. This value is going to be fairly specific for your 3D printer's capabilities, and for mine, 0.2 millimeters provides for a tough but solid fit. Layer swapping is one of the most commonly used methods within the MatterHackers office, and that's just because it's so easy. All you have to do is take your original model, slice it, and put it on your printer, and then pause it at the right point. And you can either do that by pausing it through the LCD, you can have an M code within the G code that you manually put there so that it pauses at the right layer, or if you're using matter control, you just tell it at which layer you need it to pause. And as long as the geometry is different at that new layer, then the color will come across. So here I had the red, paused it, and then I printed the gold, and then you can very easily see the logo and the border around it, instead of it being one solid color or needing paint or something. And once you get good at it, you can really get far with it, like printing a lot of different colors at once to create a much more vibrant textile or whatever object you're trying to print. And you're not just limited to really flat things, you are just limited in changing only at the layer. So something like this, even though it's very three-dimensional, all I had to do was pause it, change it to black, pause it again, change it to white, and then once it got to the gas cap, pause again and change it to black but it didn't require me to change the model at all. I could have done this in entirely one color. It's just really nice to have this done all in one piece. The first layer inlay is something I heard of from Devin from Make Anything a little over six months ago. He described a process where you print a part, don't remove it from the bed, and just print directly over that to create a dual color 3D print. So let's jump into my computer and I'll describe what I did. The setup is very similar to the separate piece strategy, except you can't do complex tops. The inlay will be completely flat. For my custom knob, I designed the shape in Fusion 360 and created a pattern on the front I wanted to have in a different color. And did the same intersection and subtraction technique as before, 
except this time I didn't do any offsetting to the secondary colored parts, and I made sure they were only 0.4 millimeters tall, which is twice the layer height I'm going to be printing at. So I'm only going to get two layers of that second color. Once you're in the slicer, you're going to import all the parts together, and they should come in aligned to each other. And if they don't, usually there's a way for you to align them all based on their origin. Set the part in the center of the build plate, and make sure you don't have a brim, and your skirt is far enough away to not interfere with the primary colored part. Remove the primary colored part, slice, and start your prints, or export to your SD card. When the print finishes, remove any boogers that could get caught by the primary part, change filament, and purge until clean. Then, undo the removal of the primary part and delete the secondary part now, slice it, and print. This new print should go right over the top of the inlay and melt together cleanly, giving you a super cool two-tone print. Keep in mind that if your 3D printer uses a probing method that requires touching the bed, you may have to either disable it, or instead start these prints in a position that will be clear of the probing routine. Top inlay isn't something I considered until a coworker Mike showed me his version of it. I took that, ran with it, and went a little bit further with it. So here you have a keychain that says mailroom, use the first layer inlay I just previously described. But on the top it also has the same print on it. So to most people this would look like it was dual extruded to print this way. But in actuality what I did is I have a cavity here that's spaced specifically so that it doesn't interfere with the nozzle. So in the same way we print the black part and the print, start the gray part, it prints over the top of it, but the cavity that's left here isn't the perfect shape for the M, it doesn't have straight walls, they're actually tapered so that they don't run up against the edges of the nozzle. Now a standard E3D nozzle has a taper of about 60 degrees, so as long as the degrees of your taper are 45 or greater, you shouldn't have any problem with interference. There is going to need to be some little bits of calibration so that your nozzle doesn't just smear across, so if it does any extrusion, it needs to make sure that when it retracts, it has a z-hop high enough to bring it back over and down. Otherwise, you will get marks over the surface. But this is a really interesting technique because you can get basically the same results that you would with a dual extrusion printer, it's just a nozzle. Each one of these have their own place and utility, so don't be afraid to try one out, find it doesn't work, and think about how to incorporate a different method for your design. And you may reach a point where you need a new dual extrusion printer or some filament splicing method for your more ornate designs. And for that, you can check out matterhackers.com. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.